It's now 18 minutes after 7, and welcome back to Morning Express. Now, this week kicks off with the IEBC Chair Wafulache Bukati declaring Uhuru Kenyatta as president-elect after the October 26 repeat polls. The declaration would set a pace for a series of events with NASA leader Raila Odinga dismissing the poll for the second time as a sham and announcing the uh, formation of the People's Assembly. Here is a sneak preview of what happened before we delve into our week's review and discussion. After days of counting and tallying of votes in the repeat presidential poll, the week began with IEBC Chairman Wafula Chebukati declaring Uhuru Kenyatta the winner. We are here by declare Mr. Uhuru Mukai Kenyatta. Kenyatta emerged victorious with over 7.5 million votes in an exercise that was boycotted by the National Super Alliance leader, Raila Odinga. His competitors, Dr. Ekuru Aukot and Dr. Jafet Kavinga Kaluyu, considered defeat and called on Kenyans to allow the country forge ahead with the development agenda. I want to congratulate the winner, uh, categorically uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, for working very hard on this. First and foremost, wish to congratulate him. Um, it is undemocratic not to accept an outcome of an election, even if one may have issues with it. As they say in our national language, Kiswahili, asia kubali kushindwa, sio mshindani. Kenyatta now awaits the swearing-in ceremony, which in accordance with the law should be held two weeks after the declaration in the absence of any legal obstacles. His victory, however, was once again dismissed by NASA, who termed the exercise a sham. The sham election portends a president who is in office unconstitutionally. You have a constitution with ambiguous provisions on the standards that elections must fulfill. The opposition has vowed not to recognize Kenyatta's presidency and even gone ahead to form the People's Assembly aimed at restoring democracy in the country through peaceful processions and economic boycott. The coalition's parliamentary party, PP, and the national resistance movement. The resistance movement shall be responsible for implementing a vigorous, positive political action program that includes economic boycotts, peaceful processions, picketing, and other legitimate forms of protest. But even as the opposition termed the repeat poll a sham, the elections observation group ILO could not state whether the exercise was free, fair, and credible. According to ELOG, the absence of party agents in polling stations except for Jubilee Party, as well as the absence of non-partisan observers, severely compromised the transparency and accountability of the voting and counting processes. Um, for us, we feel the, the environment was not conducive. Um, the fact that there was postponement in 25 constituencies due to insecurity, violence and tension in many parts of the country. With the issue threatening to prolong the current political crisis, the National Council of Churches of Kenya, NCCK, has proposed the amendment of the constitution to a parliamentary system that will allow inclusivity. These divisions are expressions of unresolved grievances and perceptions of exclusion and denial of dignity for the opposition by the arrangement of power as defined in the Constitution of Kenya 2010. The church says this system will ensure more Kenyans do not feel left out of the electoral process. Janet Chapia, KTN News. All right, so that was part of the big story that started off this week. And let me start, first of all, by introducing the guests that we have in studio this morning. And to my extreme left, we have Senator Ledama Olekina. And uh, welcome, sir. Good to have you this morning. morning. We also have James Mamboleo, who is an advocate. And last but not least, we have Steve Ogola, who is also an advocate. Let me also mention at this point, we had invited uh, Senator Isaac Moura. And, uh, well, he canceled at the last minute and said he will not make it. Uh, so that's just good to note so that we are in the right picture. So let me start with you, Senator Ledama. And uh, the people's movement, the people's uh, movement that is uh, being uh, formed by NASA, we already know that uh, NASA leadership has met. 
and has engaged, uh, has engaged governors who are going to go to the counties. But give us a bit more structure on what that People's Assembly is all about. And also, importantly, the objective. First of all, Maura, you must uh, allow me to castigate the actions of the police in Gitonga, Laikipia. Michael, Gitonga. Gitonga, sorry. Yeah. Um, I said Maura because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really disappointed with this government. I am hurt beyond any words that can express. Our people in Laikipia are, are actually being killed. Our economy is being killed. Our livelihood is being destroyed. And it is actually really bad for us even to look at anything else apart from focusing on what is happening in this country. Over 300 cows were killed. It was so sad, you know? And this government has got to stop all their monkey business. You know, you cannot come in and say the Maasai invaded those like Kipia ranches. Those are our lands before. And when there is a drought, how do you expect people to survive? So I think this government and I'm, I'm actually calling upon Boynet. I beseech him to go and take action because it is so sad. We had a case of one uh, man whose 300 cows were killed and his wife is actually admitted in hospital going through chemotherapy. So how do you expect that person to survive? So this is really sad. And this week has been one of the saddest weeks for the Maasai people. And I call upon this government to really take action, you know? Okay. These are very, very sad things. Mm -hmm. And these are the reasons why we are saying we are not happy with the way this government is formed. You've asked a very good question about the formation of the assembly. When you look at Article 1 of the Constitution, it gives the people, Section 2 of Article 1 of the Constitution, it gives the people the power. It gives them the rights to exercise the power. They can, they can, they can choose to do it through their elected representatives, or they can do it themselves. So in this case, when Raila Molo Dinga called for a national um, people assembly, he's actually now telling people, it is now time for you to be able to exercise the powers that you are given by the Constitution. What we are calling for is this. In each and every county, particularly the counties that we control, and we are happy that the governors are working with us. These assemblies will be made up of elected officials, like the governor, the senator, the members of parliament, and the members of the, um, of the county assemblies, the religious members, also community members. People have got to come in and talk about all these challenges that we're facing. Okay. When you look at what happened during the, the recent concluded uh, election, we know clearly that the KIMS equipment are only designed to identify voters. And that is their, their sole purpose, to identify voters and to transmit the, the results. Uh -huh. They are supposed to identify voters in two ways. One, they're supposed to identify them through a biometric system or an alphanumeric. Recently, you saw the figures that came out were that the people who were identified with the biometric system were only about 5 million people. Okay, now, allow me to bring in the other gentleman here before we actually go into <laughs> the details of that. And let me come to you, Steve Ogola, on first of all your opening remarks on the events that are taking place in the country. We have um, some who went out to vote believing that the votes were, or rather the IBC was ready as per Wafula Chebukati's admission that they're ready to go to the polls. You have another half of the country that boycotted, but here we are today. We have uh, um, one group or one political div divide waiting for the swearing in of the president. The other saying that we are not going to um, acknowledge this government regardless of what, and our key mission is to resist. You're just very briefly, your opening uh, comments. I thank you, Tom. Sure you comment about that. We are now done with the election. It the people that went to election and did not go to election, that's okay. The stage where we are, because IBC three days ago gazetted uh, Uru Kenyatta as the president elect. If anybody has an issue, and we've said before, I mean, the Constitution has offered us a predictable pathway, which is to file an election petition. By the way, just to clarify, all those petitions that were filed before the declaration of the results and the gazettement of the president elect are not petitions for purposes of Article 140. I think it's very clear to, to just to sensitize Kenyans. There's no way you can succeed a petition filed before election, transform it through craft into an election petition. It must be filed after the gazettement of the president-elect. So either they amend them or they withdraw them. But and if they, even if they are determined, 
they will not have the intended consequence of uh, nullifying the election. Now, the second issue is this. Anybody, Mr. Gitonga, in this country now who says that the rule of law is not under threat, to quote Chinua Achebe, is either a fool, a crook, or does not live in this country. In what way is it under threat? I say, I say this because NASA is now uh, developing uh, an agenda that is intended to, to, uh, to take the country forward, but it's not grounded in the Constitution. The demand for election in 90 days, however well intended, you can't reference it in the Constitution. So when you start innovating outside the Constitution, you, you, you are you're basically taking us into uncharted territory. We don't know about that. Now, Jubilee side, we've had President Uru Kenyatta telling NASA to go to court if you wish to challenge this election. I want an assurance from, from, from Jubilee party to, to Kenyans, not to myself, but to Kenyans, do they genuinely believe that if an election petition is filed at the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court nullifies this election, they are happy to go to another third presidential election, considering that Uru Kenyatta went the whole breath, you know, during the 60 period campaign, he was there. Are they genuinely committed or are they just saying that as a safeguard because they know perhaps that the court will not nullify? NASA. Do they genuinely believe that if the court were to validate this election, because if you go to court Kitonga, there are two possible options. Either the court will nullify the election or the court will uphold the election. Assessing the, the reaction by these political actors on based on convenience, what I can see, the political class, both NASA and Jubilee, their posture, they seem to privilege an op a position that immunes them the legal process. That's why NASA is able to come up with ideas about election in 90 days without telling us how they want to innovate. You know, the Constitution has given us strict timelines, some of which are self-executing. For instance, if the seven-day period lapses without someone filing a petition, then Uru must be sworn in within the last seven days because it says 14 days after election if no petition is filed. That is a constitutional provision that Jubilee is not in control of, NASA is not in control right. of. Let me what, it. Just hold on. what will happen to that? What will happen to that? I think Jubilee, they need to answer that because they, they'll be the beneficiary. But NASA must answer that in the context of the demand for election in 90 days. Now, even if you were to have that election in 90 days, after Uru is sworn in, he's sworn in under Article 140, 142 for a term of five years. Tell me, political actors campaign for office to serve a full term. How do you, how do you navigate out of that? And, 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 and I want us to come yes. into that. Let me, let me bring in Mamboleo and your thoughts so far on where we are as a country. Of course, this is a very crucial time. I mean, Kenyans went to the 26th literally with bated breath, feeling like the 27th was doomsday, depending on how things are going to happen. But here we are today. We thank God that so far um, we have more normalcy than we would have been expected. Not as ideal as we would have wanted, but at least... We are here able to come to work, and that is definitely a good thing. Uh, Mike, I want to look Kenyans in the face and tell them that, you know, when you pose some of these questions to people in NASA, they cannot answer them. Um, tremendous, uh, tremendous respect to my friend here, the senator, when you pose that question. What is this assembly about? He told you about Maasai issues, and I really feel about the Maasai. Um, he told you about many other things. He didn't answer that question. This is what we must say today, which is extremely important. First thing. Um, there are those who said that this election was not going to be held. It has been held. 7.5 plus million Kenyans stand out and voted. And then um, what follows? Under Article 140 of the Constitution, um, an election has been held um, in which now uh, the other processes that are remaining must follow. As uh, my um, advocate colleague here says, we are now waiting for someone either to file a petition as a result of which we go and fight it out again in the Supreme Court, or um, the events uh, that follow the swearing in of the president will uh, be put in motion. So this is what we must tell Kenyans at this particular point in time. We have seen an opposition which keeps mutating from NASA, it becomes a national resistance movement. Now it becomes a national, uh, I don't know whether we are calling it an assembly or something. Article 1 of the Constitution, which they cite, has always been there, OK? This formation has decided that it's not going to participate in parliament. Through their <laughs> elected representatives, they have completely boycotted parliament. They, I don't know whether they are, they are boycotting uh, uh, county assemblies as well, but they want to tell us, they want to engage in an informal conversation 
out here which is not um, which is not founded on the basis of the law. Every Kenyan has a freedom of association. They can uh, assemble, they can canvass, they can debate, they can discuss in whichever form they want. However, when they call themselves an assembly, they need to tell us uh, the details of this assembly. And he, uh, the senator says that uh, in those counties they control. You know, um, I, I become extremely, extremely uh, <laughs> concerned when the senator says that there are counties that they control, okay? I don't know what form of control they have. All right. But uh, this is what is important. And you raised some, some important and valid questions which I would like Senator to uh, reply to. But the opposition coalition NASA leaders have kicked off a journey to mount pressure on the government through the formation of the National Resistance Movement and the People's Assembly. Opposition leaders are also set for the economic boycott targeting companies that they are allied to Jubilee government. And uh, what does that mean? Let's listen into what, to some of what has been said. NASA has two organs. The Coalition's Parliamentary Party, PP, and the National Resistance Movement. The Resistance Movement shall be responsible for implementing a vigorous, positive political action program that includes economic boycotts, peaceful processions, picketing, and other legitimate forms of protest. You anticipate that the task force recommendations will include constitutional amendments that will be presented to the People's Assembly for adoption and thereafter to the county assemblies for ratification. In my honest opinion, that is not provided for in the Constitution. And Honorable Raila Odinga and NASA cannot create, you know, uh, for us outside the Constitution. Yes, uh, the People's Assembly is provided for in the Constitution. They are called uh, in Kenya Bunga uh, Lawananchi. It's already there. So there's nothing new uh, Honda Boraila Odinga is going to create. Forums where people discuss the happenings, the political happenings of the day is, is, is done. What is the end result when you form these people's assembly? What do you gain? All right, and let me bring in Senator Ledama. And as you answer some of the questions raised by Mamboleo, we do know that the National Assembly is a constitutional body that has been put there for representation for the people. How is this uh, People's Assembly that is outside of Parliament, that is outside of um, the organs that are there constitutionally going to operate? Gitonga, let me, let me just go back to what my distinguished panelist has discussed here. The Constitution is crystal clear. If you read Article 1, Section 2, it gives us the power, as the people of Kenya, to either exercise the power directly or through the representatives, like members of parliament. The Right Honorable Raila Odinga made it very clear that NASA will now be made up of two wings. There will be the parliamentary group and there will be the NRM, which is a national resistance movement. This NRM will be the one which will be tasked to constitute these national assemblies. If I feel that my rights are, not, are being violated, I have a right as a Kenyan to be able to complain. I have a right under Article 37 of the Constitution to pick it to demonstrate. I also have a right to determine how I'm supposed to be led by the, by the, uh, by the president of this country. So what uh, Raila Mola Odinga said, and what we are saying as NASA, is that it is now time for us to involve everyone in the country. We want the people to determine how they are going to be, to be, uh, to be governed. Number one, I said it very clear that we have counties that we control, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure about that. You know, you know very well there are counties, about 27 constituencies, that elections were not held. They were not held because we, the people who reside in those constituencies, say that we do not want this election. So it is very clear, we are sick and tired of this gap which is widening between the rich and the poor because of mismanagement. But, but going back to, to the election period, and now that you mentioned that you control those constituencies and the people, as far as you're concerned, say that they do not want elections in those areas, are you aware that it is possible that people were living there that may also have wanted to also go, I mean, to vote? It yeah, was but, a choice for people not see, to vote, but there are 
residents in those areas. It's, it's, it's a cosmopolitan, uh, the, we, we are a, a country where you're allowed to live wherever you want. Kitonga, I agree with you 100%, but the majority always get their way. And when the majority of the people who live in those counties clearly stated that they do not want those elections, they didn't want the, those elections. Yes, and, they, and, and what was okay. wrong with letting IEBC, and again, this again is debatable, letting IEBC set up their machinery for those who would want to vote to come and vote, and still those who are of the persuasion that they don't want to vote stay home. That is No, I don't think there's right. anything wrong with that. It is their constitutional right, and actually if you look at where I come from, we, you know, IEBC set up their, their whatever, their polling booth, and those ones who wanted to vote went ahead and voted. But in a place where the majority of the people, where police, I mean, use a lot of force to try to force their way, we saw on television, we actually saw that those ballot boxes, whether they were marked or not, or they had ballot papers inside, were being, were being ferried by the police. I don't, so when you convert I don't think that, that flag, let Tonga. me tell you, when you convert that, and now you use pol police, you kill the people uh -huh. there, then of course the people will kick you away. Okay, okay. Agitonga, what, what, what is not open to us? I think, I think it's, uh, it's unfair to reopen a discussion that is effectively closed. Maybe we just assess the consequences of not voting. Why people not voted, did not vote, why people voted? That's, that's a decision already made before the 26th of October. Unless now we are discussing the context of mapping out the intended and unintended consequences, which for now collapses only into one. Legally speaking, uh, for me, I'm pro-law, pro the rule of law. You file that, file that election petition. Then, when an election petition is filed, obviously you are, you are required to let the judicial process take, uh, take its course. But I want to make a comment on this national resistance movement. And I want to, the dramatic effect that Mombolo is putting to it, it's really not there. I want to demystify the Constitution. If you have a detailed and deeper understanding of the application of rights generally in a constitution such as ours, there is nothing wrong with people get, getting together, assembling together. It, it happens all the time. It happens, the civil society convenes, you know, con uh, citizen oversight forums to discuss issues. Just that now this issue is being shaped by NASA and the person of Raila, because he has critical support, people think now that he may, it may mutate. That is what is creating the anxiety. But the idea itself around people's assembly is not unconstitutional. It's very much within, it does happen even now, it's, it's been happening. What I would like NASA to clarify is this. You know, you, if you start, from, you start referencing your, rights, your actions in the Constitution, then you must walk that predictable pathway. All the way. All the way. You can't begin to manipulate the Constitution for partisan advantage. Meaning, you want to do some, some acts which are already ordained. You want to use the Constitution to do something which is already permitted by the Constitution, but then in there, begin to innovate and then veer outside Are the Constitution. Are innovating or going now, out of the Constitution now what, in any way? Now, uh, that's, what, that's what I'm pressing, that there's need for clarity. The clarity is this. There are some, pro there are some steps now which are out beyond NASA, beyond, beyond Jubilee. The fact of the law is this. If no petition is filed, we will be sworn in as a matter of law. If he's sworn in as a matter of law, under Article 142, he serves a term of five years. Unless Uhuru resigns, and he must resign with Ruto, because the law says under Article 146, if there's a vacancy in the presidency, the deputy takes over for the remainder of, of the term. You need an approach, and we need, we need to make peace with that first, so that when you are developing solutions, we develop solutions that also match what the law has ordained. So in short, what, so you're, in short what, is this. what, what you're saying is that so the 90-day narrative the 90, is see, out the, of the Constitution. The, the, the idea around, around mobilization of citizen assembly is geared towards heightening the discussion for election. Now, I want clarity and on NASA to provide clarity to the, uh, to the whole country, the predictable pathway to that election. All right. Because let, that let's, election let me, let depends me just from to that. Dama, I want us no, to no, no, it me depends on the resignation. It depends on the resignation. If Uru is sworn in, the next election for sure depends on the resignation of both Uhuru and Ruto. That's a legal position. All right. Otherwise, they enjoy the term of uh, five years. you wanted to say something. Tonga Oledama has uh, had a lot to, to say and uh, mislead Kenyans. This is what is extremely important for Kenyans to understand. That you know um, the Constitution does allow you a lot of things. But the Constitution ex uh, expects that you, you live in a legal continuum. There are a number of other laws which govern many other activities, okay? Kenyans have been mobilizing, they have been coalescing, they have been debating, they have been organizing themselves as people, people's assemblies all over the place, okay? That is not new. 
So what is this new assembly that Raila Odinga is creating? We might require him to give us a step-by-step -step process. Let him explain to us as if we are six-year-olds, so as to, to understand exactly what assemblies he is creating. This is what you must, you must tell uh, this senator here. In Narok, where he is senator, the polls opened and people voted. So let so 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 let let him not say that we we th that people did not vote in Narok where he is elected as senator, the booths were opened and people went and voted. In some places of this country, people some people made sure that voting did not happen. Now there is a difference between allowing someone to make that ultimate choice whether they are going to vote and denying him that choice at all. But this is what is extremely important for us Kenyans to understand now. The electoral process in as far as election is now over, okay? At least as per the Constitution. Any person who is aggrieved with the election of 26th has a few days left to file a petition. If they do not file that petition, then the Supreme Court is not going to have anything to decide. And the process of swearing in the president kicks in immediately. Once the president is sworn in and takes over, the, his second term as president, he has a few responsibilities to begin with. The first one is to erect a structure of government, create a cabinet. All right. And let, let, let me pause you there because I want us to go to the issue of dialogue and moving forward. Mm -hmm. But first, before that, uh, from Senator, from uh, as a NASA representative, uh, are, you, are we done? Are you done as regards the, uh, the, the elections on the 26th? And by done, I mean... Are you going to, are you foreseeing a time where NASA would go to the Supreme Court to contest? Because if you're not satisfied with the 26, as per the Constitution, the pathway, what you're calling the predictable pathway, is to go to the Supreme Court and file a petition. Is that an option for NASA? First of all, let me tell you something. And let me remind uh, Mambaleo that Article 138 of the Constitution, Section 2, clearly states that an election must be held in, each and ev in, in every constituency. We have 291 constituencies in this country. Now, we have 27 constituencies that uh, the election was never held. So I would like them to respond to that if they feel like we must you know, follow the constitution to the latter. We cannot be choosing when to follow the constitution to the latter and when not to follow the constitution. True, but it would so what I'm, what be I'm the arguing place is where, this. where NASA would come we, in and say we if never elections were not held as per the constitution, the predictable pathway is we go to the Supreme Court and say, based on the fact that 27 constituencies did not participate, for whatever reason, it is not held constitutionally, think, rather than having the assembly. I think, think with the recent experience that we had with the lack of quorum in the Supreme <laughs> Court, it really, it, it, for me, and I'll be speaking on my behalf here, I would be very reluctant in going to court. I've got to apply a SWOT analysis to see what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses. But you've just said that in, we follow in this the Constitution case, to the That's why I'm saying to, to we, we are actually now constituting the, the assemblies so that we can be able to push for an election to be held within 90 days. I was very quiet. Just listen. Let me, let, I, I listened to both of you talk. Okay. I never interjected. So you need to just give me my time. Give him time. So in this case, we never participated in the 26th election. We are pushing for a period whereby we can all participate when our irreducible minimums have been met. That is issue number one. Issue number two, those constituencies that the elections were not held, elections must be held. But now they cannot be held after Uhuru has been, has been sworn in as president. So what we are asking is for people to become sober in this country. We are asking for us to be able to save this country and include everyone. Because it will be very difficult for Uhuru to govern a country which is divided. Where we are heading right now on this government or this country, we're actually heading into the dogs. If we can change the narrative now and start discussing about what is this negotiation that we must have? What are, those, what are these discussions that we must have to ensure that we save this country? We are very serious about the economic boycott. We are very serious about the people assemblies. And those will make this country ungovernable. All right. It doesn't matter whether Uhuru Muigai is sworn in as president of this country. He will not, he will not be my president. Mm -hmm. He will be the president of the five million people who voted for him. Seven million, according to the figures that we have. But that aside, that brings us now to the uh, question mm -hmm. of dialogue. Because mm -hmm. whether we have elections in 90 days, whether the 26th is upheld, whether whatever way we go, 
dialogue must be held. Now, dialogue is a call that won't go anytime soon. Opposition leaders say they are still open to dialogue that will see the country go back to the polls in 90 days. And this is some of what they've had to say so far. We are ready any day to engage in talks on only one subject, uh, on modalities and framework of conducting a free, fair, credible election. Before engaging in any dialogue, you must also be clear what differences we are sitting down to resolve. All right, so that's what uh, the NASA faction had to say. But President Uhuru Kenyatta opened a dialogue window on Monday. Immediately, he was declared president-elect. However, Uhuru wants NASA to exhaust all legal processes before they can hold talks. On the other hand, Deputy President William Ruto and Senate Majority Leader Kipchumba Murkomen are on record dismissing talks around having fresh elections before 2022. We want to ask me, are you going to engage in dialogue with so and so and so and so? Let them first and foremost exhaust their constitutionally laid out processes. Let them go to court, let them do whatever they want. Nobody shall deny them of their constitutional right. Those issues we shall discuss later. There will be no election in 90 days. There will be no discussion on matters to do with election. We will have dialogue with Mr. Odinga on other matters, not matters that have been settled by the people of Kenya in their supreme will in a ballot. When Raila Odinga has an agenda that he thinks that he wants to discuss with the president, the president has always been welcoming to discuss that issue, but not to go and dialogue with Raila Odinga on whether or not he won the election. All right, so that's what basically has been said. Let me start with you, Steve. What is the content of this dialogue? Yes. This word dialogue, what does it mean? What is clear, Gitonga, is that uh, the two political formations are communicating at cross purposes. Uru Kenyatta is saying that let's have dialogue after you exhaust the process because he genuinely believes that any court action will not nullify his election. And therefore, the dialogue that is taking place in the context of his, uh, after he's been sworn in, will not displace him from power. That is the context in which he's pushing for dialogue. NASA, they are very emphatic. And they are pushing for dialogue in the context of election. You get the challenge that NASA has is this: that 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 position is not backed by law, and they will need to overcome that challenge. And we must point it out. That's the only challenge the NASA has. They, it, they must back. They must they must find a way of innovating around that challenge. The challenge that Uru Kenyatta has is this: although he has the legal protection of the law, and he'll be, I see Uru Kenyatta in the absence of a petition and in the, in the absence of a Supreme Court judgment that reverses that nullifies the election. I see Uru Kenyatta being sworn in as a matter of course. But the challenge that Uru will have is this. This country will truly be ungovernable if it doesn't make serious concessions. This is why Raila Odinga has a constituency, he, has, he enjoys a near fanatical following, and it, is, it would be foolish to ignore that or to wish it away. What Raila is able to do, I know both sides, I have watched with shock and consternation, Gitonga, the manipulation of the constitution for partisan benefit both on NASA's side and Jubilee's side. But now let me highlight NASA. How NASA is able to manipulate this constitution in a manner that you can't stop them, but which will hurt and harm Uru's presidency by, the, by just disrupting the order of government. This is how. You see, in this country, we have the freedom of choice. If today, as a Kenyan, why, how I got here, whether I, whether I came by a matatu or by a car, is none of your business. If I choose whether someone appeals to my conscience, to, to, to reject a particular service provider, you can't take action against me. And that, is, that, that kind of sabotage is permissible. That's what is called manipulating the Constitution to achieve a certain end. You can't do something about it. You, there's nothing you can do about that. Now, now this People's Assembly, if, they were, if, they, if NASA insists on bringing, let's say, 10,000 Kenyans daily to, to have peaceful protests in the city, remember, the ease of doing business in this country is assessed on the political stability of the country. The international community, seeing that they are the outpouring of the masses in the street saying, no election, no reform, no, never mind that, that that argument itself is outside the law, but the fact that they can say it, no election, no reform, peacefully, every day, will grind the country into a, in, into, 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 into a halt. What I would urge you to is this. Do not ignore NASA's ability to manipulate the constitution for their own partisan advantage. Right. NASA, mm -hmm. do not 
even as you, even if you, even if you want, even if you can manipulate the constitution, but there's also a certain limit beyond which you can't go. That the obvious limit beyond which they can't go is to demand an election in 90 days. That is what I see. So okay. there's a question of framing, Senator, which hasn't been done. Senator, let me bring you in here. And first of all, the question here being what that dialogue is all about. And secondly, <clears> maybe to answer to Steve's uh, concern, is NASA manipulating the constitution? Uh, first of all, let me state clearly and categorically that the only discussion that we are willing to have with the Jubilee side, and particularly with Uhuru Kenyatta, is a discussion on how we can be able to ensure that IEBC is fully independent and that we hold an election within 90 days. An election that, that is can the only be, that is the only that discussion NASA that we are going having. to be able to have. So, that not, is number one. so what happens, let, let's just play this out, what yes. happens if Uhuru Kenyatta is sworn in? Well, then you will start seeing massive civil disobedience. Number one, we will bring in four million people to the city of Nairobi to protest. Regardless of uh, whether they that's will going come. to affect the economy or... We don't, we don't give a hoot in hell in that. Because if you don't care about and us... And those the same people if that you're trying care to liberate. About us, we, the, the only way we we'll liberate these people is if these people are fully represented. Now, the way these people feel is that their candidate was not given a, a fair chance to be able to either go through the whole process and win or lose fairly. The process was not fair. We need to level the playing field. We are not going to talk about the past election. We all know, the international community know, everyone in this country know clearly what happened. So what we are saying now is this, if we really care about this country, if we care about the businesses in this country, let us sit down and talk. Let us find a process that includes everyone. If we are not going to do that, you will see me bringing over 100,000 Maasai in the streets but of Senator, Nairobi. I am concerned okay. that you don't give a hoot about the economy of this country. <laughs> no, in this case, why should, they, why should this economy only benefit a few and not benefit everyone? We uh, know do, we, do, we do want everyone to, be, to benefit, mm -hmm. okay? We want everyone to, to benefit. So we're very strong and very serious on these issues. That is the reason why you saw recently when Raila was making his, his uh, statement, he did not spell out. This thing will trickle down slowly, and you will feel the pain even sitting in that seat. So what we are asking is for all of us to come together and sit down and discuss and say, I want to be included, okay? Give me a chance to be included. You don't give me a chance, you will feel the pain. If we bring in four million people across the country on a daily basis, we are going to create another Taharit Square here in this Nairobi All right. until we are given an opportunity to be heard. And okay. to be fully represented. It is now five minutes to eight. We need to release Katie and home, and we're going to take a short break. But uh, hold that thought. We still need to find out what this dialogue is all about. It is uh, well time for us to say goodbye to Katie and home for life and style to begin. So, Katie and home, goodbye. Those of us on Katie and News will continue watching. If you'd like to continue with this conversation, switch over to Katie and News. For now, we take a short break. We'll be right back and find out what is this dialogue all about.